Good evening, everyone. It's me, Dr. Plague. We talk a lot about horror on this channel, but the real horror out there is how easy it is for your data to fall in the hands of disreputable people. That's why today's video is sponsored by Aura. While you're enjoying today's spooky video, data brokers, those things that go bump on the web, could already be selling your information to scanners, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, your health records, your relatives, they could all be out there. That's why I've been using Aura. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests just for me. It was simple to use and very intuitive, and I had barely gotten out of the setup process, and it was already blocking over 20 data broker requests on my behalf. Aura protects your passwords, your banking information, everything you need for day-to-day -day online life. Cleaning up my information not only helps reduce the amount of spam I get, but it also protects me from hackers who could use my information to help them access my social media accounts, bank accounts, other sensitive information, things like a certain YouTube channel that you all enjoy listening to so much. Aura also does much more to protect me and my family from online threats, the kind you can't see. It comes with other features like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more without having to download several different apps. It really is just that easy to set up. And best of all, I get everything at one affordable price. I hear you saying, but Dr. Plague, I have one or two of these tools already. But, dear readers, not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Readers of my fine tales can tell you why that never ends well. Aura is always on, doing the hard work of keeping me safe so I can focus on other tasks like finishing my latest book or uploading my most recent video. I value my privacy, and I know you value yours. You can go to Aura.com, that's A-U-R-A dot com, to start your two-week free trial. You can also check out the link below and start your free trial with Aura. So why not give Aura a try and protect yourself from the real monsters out there? We added another member to our family today. He was a beautiful, short-haired Jack Russell Terrier. We named Sparky because he was a little ball of energy. He was a rescue dog that came to us at a young age. The Pound wasn't sure of his exact age. It was more of an unofficial age that we put on him. That put the number of dogs we had up to five. Two Terriers, a Jack Russell, and two Golden Retrievers. Growing up, we always had pets, and when I finally started my own family, I wanted my kids' lives to be filled with a hectic house full of pets. My life felt complete. I was married to the most amazing wife, and we were blessed with two beautiful daughters, Aisha and Sarisha. My wife, Maraid, shared my love of dogs, so it was set in stone that our home would be filled with life. My favorite thing about owning dogs was when I walked inside from work, all five dogs would run up to me when I arrived at the door. No matter how crappy the day was, there was always instantly a pack of dogs there to cheer me up. All the dogs had different personalities, and they all loved you in their own unique way. So if there was ever a change in their mood, you would know something was up. Life isn't always a bed of roses, but for the most part, it was great. As long as everyone was happy and healthy, that's all that mattered. So whenever it was the kid's birthday, we made a fuss over them. Our daughter, Aisha, was going on seven, so as a surprise, we decided to get her an expensive porcelain doll that she'd spotted in the window of an antique shop downtown. The doll was a big hit with our daughter. She beamed from ear to ear when I arrived home with it. These were the kind of moments I lived for. Seeing our daughter happy filled me with immense joy. The doll had long curly brown hair and was dressed in a flowing silk gown that our daughter called Masha. She loved it, but as soon as we brought it into the house, the dogs began acting strange. 
At first, I didn't think anything of it. Sparky was new to the house, so we put it down to an adjustment problem. But as soon as I walked in the door with that doll, he became extremely distressed. Every time I came in the door, it was the same thing. I would hear a stampede of dogs make their way from the kitchen to the hall. But as soon as Sparky sensed the doll, his tail folded between his legs, and he ran. I would always find him later, shaking behind the couch, in a real state. The four other dogs reacted differently to Sparky, but it was a reaction nonetheless. I know my dogs like I know my children, and something seemed off with them. They're all young dogs and love to jump around and play and fight, but whenever our daughter walked into the room with the doll, they suddenly became submissive. They weren't scared submissive, but obedient to the point that they would sit and stare at that doll. Their eyes were fixated on it and followed it wherever my daughter went with it. It was strange, to the point of being unsettling. Things took a turn for the stranger while I was finishing up some homework. Sparky ran into the kitchen to me, shaking and barking as if he'd been attacked. Something didn't quite sit right with me, so I went to the living room to see what the problem was. The kids were at school, and Aisha liked to keep the doll sitting on the couch, waiting for her when she got home. I wasn't sure what I was expecting to see, but when I walked into the room, Masha wasn't where she had left her. Instead, she was on the living room floor, standing upright, and the four dogs had formed a circle around her. It almost seemed like they were worshipping her. I would love to say that things settled down after that, but it only got worse. I didn't like how the dogs followed our daughter around the house whenever she had the doll in her hand. Before the doll came into the house, they were so protective of the girls, but now they seemed to look at her with contempt. Whenever Aisha would pick up the doll, they would get agitated, and sometimes they would growl at her. I didn't know what to make of it until I got a phone call from my wife while I was at work. She was in hysterics. I rushed home to find my wife standing at the door with our two daughters. Aisha was still holding the doll, and I could hear the dogs inside going crazy. Aisha had a mark on her cheek. What the hell happened? I asked. I could still hear the dogs pounding against the front door. The dogs are acting very strange. Mika went after Aisha. I didn't know what to say. I'd never seen my wife and kids so upset before, and it felt like a dark cloud had descended over our happy home. I took the doll from my daughter and placed it by the tree before I opened the door to let the dogs out. They ran straight to the doll and formed a circle around it as if, as if they were protecting it. We removed Mika from the house. It broke my heart, but we had to do it. I thought things might change after that, but they only got stranger. We took the doll from our daughter until we could figure out what was happening. We placed the doll in the shed, which made the dogs go wild, apart from Sparky. He began watching over our daughters, and I felt a bit better knowing he was in the house with them. The other dogs wouldn't settle, so I had no choice but to put them in the yard. As soon as they got out, they set up camp outside the shed, sitting obediently as if they were waiting for a second coming. I remember thinking that maybe at least they were quiet, and it was a change from the mayhem. That changed one morning when I went outside to get in my car and was shocked to find blood everywhere. I followed a trail of blood to the shed and was horrified to find the carcass of a goat with its guts splayed out and left by the shed door. The dogs were covered in blood, but that hadn't prepared me for the paw prints of blood arranged in a strange pattern on the shed door. If I didn't know better, I would swear it was some kind of sacrifice. This went on for days. Every time I went to get in my car, I would find a different animal with its guts hanging out left by the shed. My wife was beside herself. Life had completely changed, but... The thought of something demonic happening was beyond our imagination. We were rational people, so 
We made excuses for what was happening. Waking up to the bloody carcasses eventually stopped, but the dogs still sat outside the shed, waiting. But waiting for what? Sparky kept his distance and was happy being in the house with us. Apart from the dogs, things seemed to go back to normal, which probably lulled us into a false sense of security. We didn't think much about the doll until I went to check on our daughters. Sora's was sitting alone, playing with her own dolls, when suddenly a feeling of dread crept up my spine. Where's Aisha? I nervously asked. My daughter looked at me with a smile on her face. She went to the shed to get Masha, so we can play families. As soon as the words left her mouth, I heard a scream out from the back. My soul left my body. All I could think of was that bloody carcass the dogs had left by the shed, and I feared the worst for my daughter. I made it to the back garden to find Aisha on top of the car, crying her eyes out, while Sparky was furiously attacking the other dogs, trying to protect my daughter. Sparky was a bloody mess, but I managed to get both of them in the house. Apart from a few cuts, he was all right. That night, I locked my wife and two girls in the bedroom until I could think of a solution. All I knew was I had to get the doll from the shed and get it away from the house. I waited until the next morning to get the doll as far from the house as possible. I grabbed my old bat from the closet and took a deep breath before I opened the door. As I stepped out into the garden, the sight that greeted me stopped me in my tracks. Fear completely gripped my body. The four dogs I was expecting had now turned into hundreds. They were coming from all directions, dogs of all kinds. The ones that arrived all sat submissively outside the shed, as if they were waiting for the second coming. All I could think was, I'm going to need a bigger bat. You're still here. Thanks so much for joining us for tonight's spooky tale. If you'd like a little bit more spooky in your life, why not click on one of the videos that appears at the end of our story? Or maybe head on over to one of our playlists where you can get your fill of spooky content. If you like your spooky a little more tactile, I've got a new book that's come out. If you'd like your own copy, there's a link below in the description where you can get your own copy of my spooky book. If you like what you see here on the channel and think you might like to support in a more monetized way, then why not come over to Patreon or become a member on YouTube? Speaking of, let's go ahead and thank our members now. Thanks to Siv Garstead, Unicorn Hollow, and Army Dude for being our spooky ghost contributors. Thanks to Janet, Lee Kendall, Psycat, Rhonda J, Sue Casper, and Valinator for being our spooky skeleton contributors. And thanks to Osnap, Hi Stacy, Winter, Zeronin, Stephanie Carrington, Tyler Parker, Cinnamon Fox, Grim Reaper, Tomboy Top Uwu, and Queen Sheba for being our ghostly reader tier contributors. And a big thanks to Scott Donahue for being our ghostly writer tier contributor. Thanks, everyone. We just couldn't do the show without you. If you'd like to support the channel, then come on down to Patreon or become a member on YouTube. Spooky Skeleton Tier Contributors, that's our $5 tier, get their spooky 12 hours early at 8.30 a.m. as opposed to 8.30 p.m. My time, of course. And while Ghostly Reading is uh, only a tier that's available on Patreon, you get a signed copy of my book anytime I write one on your doorstep in hopefully a timely manner. If you'd like a book, we have many on Amazon. I've got links below if you'd like to follow those. Um, should get you to my page so you can buy any one of my eight books I believe we're up to now. I'm sure they'd look really nice on your shelf, and I'll sign them for you if you can find me out in the wild. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Dr. Plague, signing off. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>